Hey everybody, welcome back to Matthew Kelly Pottery on YouTube. I hope you are doing well. Today we're going to make some slab plates for my next wood firing, which we will be finishing up actually two weeks from today, the day I'm making this video. So I have very little time left to make anything else that will be dry enough to be bis fired and glazed to go in this next wood firing. And uh, yeah, so it is crunch time. And I want to make some slab plates because I have an idea of how I want them to turn out, whether they will or not. I don't know 100%, but that's the joy of experimenting and trying new things. So let's go. All right, everybody, here's the reason why I want to make some slab plates. Uh, I noticed unloading the last wood kiln that, oh, and by the way, I didn't do a video of unloading the last wood kiln because all I have is a time lapse of like the whole like six hours that we unloaded and it's from a pretty good distance back and so it's just like me and five other people like running into because if you speed it up as a time lapse me us running into the kiln carrying pot out and setting it out in the yard or on a board and you don't really see the pot so i apologize about that my plan is for this next wood firing is that when we when we unload is to actually do a little bit more of a detailed unload it'll take us a lot longer to unload but i really would like to show you guys some of that as we unload um and I, I probably won't do it live. I probably will definitely do a video of it, but uh, in order to get a better quality video of an unload, I really have to take some time and show the camera a few different pieces from like each shelf or each stack. And so that's gonna take some time and it's gonna take me thinking about it and having the other people that are helping me unload understand that, you know, hey, I'm gonna, we're gonna be unloading here, but I'm gonna stop every once in a while and show the camera some pieces. And so it's just gonna be a little bit different. And so I, I never made a video of the unloading because it was just kind of boring in my opinion. It was just, like I said, a time lapse of us unloading for six hours. You know, it wouldn't be that long. It'd be a very short video, but it's just like a bunch of us running around carrying pots. And it wasn't that exciting or interesting. So anyway, long story short, when I unloaded the last kiln, I always try to take time and look at the pots as they come out. Notice where they are in the kiln notice uh, like uh, uh, changes from one firing to the next, noticing the color of the clay, the effects, noticing where there was probably spots of reduction, uh, how the glaze looks in certain spots of the kiln versus other spots. There's lots of things that I pay attention to, especially in a kiln that large, that I want to pay attention and learn not only how I fired my kiln and the results I get, but where, where in the kiln do I get certain effects so that I can take advantage of those effects moving forward? So one of the spots that I noticed an effect that I really like was in the, uh, in the middle stack I had, uh, I think in the bottom, a few shelves, I had some of my trays for my planters like this right here, okay? And I had these stacked, like these are two different sizes, but I normally had these stacked so they were rim to rim and you can see the, 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 the marks here from where the wads were. You can see those are marks where the wads were, where there was another planter on top of this one, okay? And then what I normally did is I would have two of those stacked like this, and then I actually had another one stacked on top like this, on top of, you know, so then there was wads in between, and I stacked another one up here like this. And I noticed as I was unloading that the ones on the bottom looked pretty cool and then the one that was sitting on top that had something else on top of it they look amazing but they look amazing on the bottom which is the side you're not going to see and it's a planter tray which is nothing fancy but look at that the effects of the uh of the flame and the salt and the wood ash moving through the kiln across the wads on the bottom of that planter tray are just amazing and I want to try to take advantage of that because I love the raw spots where the wads were and I love how you can like I said you it just looks like the you can just imagine the flames moving through the kiln 
coming across in through the kiln and coming across the top of this planter tray and going in between that tray and the one that was sitting on top of it with those wads right there and that right there knowing where that was in the kiln and and the fact that that happened and I think it also happened because this is pretty much a flat surface and that there was another pot sitting on top of it that allowed you know that that process to happen where those flames cause that kind of like reduction and 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 just that the effects to happen on that surface there's lots of things that probably happen but uh, the fact that that happened there and uh, and and I'm gonna try to take advantage of that with those slab plates here's another one like I said that was another one I believe that one was also on the top of a stack and then when there was another pot sitting on top of that that caused that to happen now I would like to have the slab plates to have a slight curve to them because if you're actually going to use them for something it would be nice I don't know if I'll get that effect if it's got a curve to it or not because that heat and and flames and all that moving through the kiln I don't know that if it'll it'll affect it if it has to go up over the rim and then down through or if it's just because it was you know perfectly flat that those flames were be able to move between those two pots easily but that's like I said that's the whole reason I'm gonna try this out and experiment and we'll see what happens I might even try to fire a couple of the slab plates upside down on top of a stack of, of planter trays or something else to see if that affects it uh, there's just lots of things I'm gonna try and in order to do that I want to have some slab plates and I would like to have them slab so that they're a little bit more organic um, they're kind of like you know they don't have to be perfectly square or round um, so that's the reason I'm gonna do them and make them slab I could probably try to throw some as well um, but just to try to take advantage I thought it would be cool if I'm gonna have these round dots on the bottom and those flames kind of and those markings moving across the piece I thought it'd be really cool if those three dots were not on a round piece if they were on a square ish piece that it would look cool because then you have the contrast between the square and the round dots and all that kind of thing. So that's my thought process behind it. And now we're going to go make the platters uh, or plant or trays or whatever they are. We're going to go make them or at least a, a, a attempt to, right? So let's go to the back of the studio. All right. So for now, here's what we have. I have a couple of uh, plates that I've used before to... Uh, these are commercially made plates that I've used to make slab plates before. Uh, when I've made them before, I've actually made them on the inside of the plate, or I've used the bottom to actually make a mold and then use that to make a plate on the inside so that it would have this square bottom. Uh, what I'm thinking of doing is using the bottom of these uh, and using a cushion where you can push that down into the slab that you make and then make, it, uh, make this shape on the inside. Uh, but in order to do that, I think what I would want to do is fill in the bottom of these plates so that, that it doesn't have this foot pushed down into the bottom of the plate. And so uh, first thing I'm going to do is fill in the bottom of these with clay, coat that with some cornstarch baby powder so that it won't stick when I push that into the slab. And so we're going to try that. And then we'll probably also try making some that are just organically made, uh, whether they're completely flat with just a little bit of a thicker rim. Or, or what I don't know exactly yet we're gonna like I said I'm just kind of doing this on the whim as I go so first thing I'm gonna do is take some of my clay fill in the bottom here and then probably use my uh, uh, long ruler here to kind of scrape the bottom and make that perfectly flat across there add some baby powder uh, and then uh, slab out a couple pieces and uh, and try that with that so that's the first thing we're gonna do is fill these in
apparently I need to stiffen the clay up a bit before I do that because it did not hold its shape whatsoever. Uh, so I might leave this one on here for a while, let it stiffen, and then uh, we'll try a little bit different method uh, for the next one. Well, that's definitely more of what I wanted right there uh, and I can clean up some of that later uh, but problem is I only have one of these plates so uh, I've got to let that stiffen in there and then get it out of there in order to make more uh, I will uh, maybe try out a, another uh, idea as far as making that uh, plate but for now I'm gonna let that one stiffen up and uh, we'll bring you back later when I can take this one out of there and uh, and try some other uh, other ideas. All right, I think I figured out uh, what I want and how to achieve it. Okay, so that's that's what this is right here. This is a uh, a square-ish platter, and uh, it is uh, made out of the soft clay, so I didn't have to stiffen it. And uh, uh, I will show you exactly how I did this. I did it with a six-inch uh, electric kiln post, my ruler. And a slab of clay, this is uh, at about three-eighths of an inch of thick of uh, a slab of clay according to my, uh, my settings on my slab roller. So I'm going to slab out another piece and I'll show you exactly how I did this. And I'm doing them on the bat now so that I don't have to worry about picking them up off the table when I'm done. So uh, that'll definitely help as well. So there's that one. And uh, let's cut a, uh, a piece of clay here and uh, we'll get to it. So I have this slabbed out. Uh, my last one I made, the bat didn't fit to cut it according to the bat. Now this is going to make it pretty much perfectly square. Um, don't know if I want to do that. The last one I cut seven and a half inches, which was pretty much perfect. This one's eight and a half. Um, I think I could do that. I think I will and grab a little bit larger post. So I'll grab a seven inch post if I have one. I think I have seven inch post. Uh, so I'm going to cut this according to the bat, which will actually make it square, or should be square, probably it's not perfectly square, uh, but uh, the other one I just measured seven and a half inches in uh, all four directions and then cut it so it was definitely not perfectly square. Alright, so there's that. And it barely fits on the bat, being eight and a half inches. All right, so now, yeah, this is the seven inch post. What I'm doing to make these is I lift up the edge of the slab and I'm sliding my ruler underneath there. Then I set the post in probably about a half inch from the edge and then I'm gonna hold this down and lift up on the ruler just like that pick up the post I'm gonna go to the opposite side do the same thing sliding the ruler under there probably about a half an inch so that I can pull it up at about the same point that I put the post in there turning that edge up I'm gonna do a quarter turn now, go to this side, and I'll clean all these edges up later and I might even add some, uh, some texture to the edge. Turn that edge up. Oh, I got a chunk of clay in there, that's not good. I didn't want that. 
Oh, I should have put the ruler under there before I put the post in there. Turn that edge up. There we go. Maybe I'll have to do some texture in the bottom of that one. So that's pretty much uh, what I made for that last one, and that kind of gives me the uh, that gives me the turned up edge on a squarish platter with the thick chunky edge there. That's kind of what I was going for and still be flat in the bottom so I'm hoping that those flames come up and move through here and give me that effect and uh, I won't know for about another two and a half weeks but uh, I'm gonna make a bunch more of these in different sizes and uh, we're gonna try them out so here we go Alright guys, well there we have it. I am, uh, uh, at least for now, I'm super glad I figured out this technique and I uh, had some ideas of how I wanted them to look, but I didn't know exactly how I wanted to accomplish it until I started trying them. And uh, if the clay was stiffer, I think pushing them down, pushing a form down into the foam would have definitely worked. I've seen that plenty of times on uh, YouTube, uh, but this clay is so soft that that just was not going to work. But uh, just making them thick enough and turning that edge up against a sharp, uh, uh, against the post really worked well. Uh, I'm, I'm slightly worried about this large one that is going to warp like crazy, but we'll find out uh, here in about two and a half weeks as I unload this wood kiln that we're going to fire. I will definitely find out. And uh, I'll definitely show you all as I do an unloading video because I said, as I said, I will uh, work on that this time and I'll definitely make an unloading video. But if you follow me on Instagram and Facebook, you'll probably see a sneak peek. If these turn out really well, you'll see a sneak peek on there uh, before the video ever comes out. So there's a, there's a tip. You can follow me there and get updates. Uh, so anyway, uh, thank you guys as always for, for uh, supporting the channel and watching the videos and uh, just being here, and uh, I really appreciate you. And uh, yeah, hopefully if, if you make uh, uh, slab pieces like this, uh, you know, send me a picture or send me a video of, of you making them because this is something new for me. I'm sure I could have learned a whole lot about it if I was searched it on YouTube, but I didn't do that. I just gave it a shot and see what happens. Uh, just uh, trying, uh, trying it as I go, or, or uh, what is it, building the wagon as we ride it? That's what we're doing here. So uh, anyway, thank you guys as always, and we'll see you in the next video. All right, bye.